the second lesson of the week. It is, of course, Thursday's performing arts lesson. And if you remember, on Tuesday, we started our new genres with three new countries to travel to. So we stayed put in the United States for our tap dancing. We went to Egypt for our clowning. And of course, we started our mega competition for our sea shanty, which we think originates in the British Isles. So we will crack on with all three, as always. Uh, we're gonna tap first. So if you've got tap shoes or you've got your solid shoes, get those on now. Make sure you've got your comfy clothes on, plenty of space, long hair back and more nearby. Let's get going. Hi, upper primary tappers. Ready to give this another go. So on Tuesday, we learned our very funky fast warm up, as well as two new moves. We learned the shunt, and the flap. So anybody that didn't join us, the shunt was where your feet are together and your heels are off the floor and you just push forward and lower those heels at the same time. That was a really dodgy version because I didn't make a very good sound. That's better, a bit neater. And then the flap was the brush taps, which all comes from the toe. And then we got faster and faster. And of course, we always have to go on the other side as well to keep our legs equally strong. So we will try our warm up again, see if we get any better at it. I will teach you some new moves today and we will incorporate them into a little jazzy, snazzy routine. So our warm up was hop, hop, jump, hop, hop, jump, jump in, shunt, heel, flap, heel, flap, no, flap, heel, flap, heel, flap, heel, flap, heel. So let's go over that. So we did two hops and a jump out, kind of hop scotchy. Hop, hop, out, then we do it again. Hop, hop, out, jump the feet together and push those heels down. And then we had four flaps, but we put the heel down after. So flap, heel, flap, heel, flap, heel, flap, heel. And then of course that made us ready for the other side. Now let's try once on the other side as well. And then don't forget this music's super zippy. But you can go at your own time for now. And then just as you get better, we can speed up. So hop, hop on this side. Ready? Five, six. Seven, we went up, hop, hop, out, hop, hop, out together, shunt up, up, heel up, up, heel up, up, heel up, up, heel. All right, people, you know this is my jam, this is my chum, so we're going to have some fun with it. Let's give it a try with the music. It is quick, people, but you can do it. We only get better by trying these things out. And on. Turn up a bit. You like this one. Ready? Hop, hop, and hop, hop, out, in, shut, clap. Six, seven, and. Side, so lift that heel up. 
Very nice. And then the picture kind of shows this thing going on. Woo! Michael Jackson style. You have to have certain tap shoes for them. We're not going to worry about that. But similar to that is where you take the foot behind and you're going to hit right on top of the toes. So it's not actually the metal that's going down. It's the very, very front of the shoe. Other side. All right, so that gives a completely different sound again. Dull because we haven't got the metal. So they are your three toe movements. Now, heels kind of only have two. Um, we have the one that we can see on the board. So if you lift your toes up, you're just going to dig your heel forward. Other side. And then if you keep your heels down and your toes down, you can release the heel. And that's like a heel dig. All right, try on the other side. Very different sound. So just like that, there are five new moves. Toes and heels. And you can imagine with those five, there's loads and loads of different combinations. And it's just a case of a lot of things doing them really, really quick. So for example, a cramp roll is toe, toe, heel, heel. We've learned that already on the side. And then you just try and get it faster and faster. So eventually it sounds like this. Yeah, four nice, really quick, crisp sounds. That's all it is. Those moves, but speed it up, okay? So, our routine, I've got a little jazzy, snazzy lady because it is kind of like that. Um, where does she start? She starts. Right, so let's start facing the side. Uh, feet in second, we remember what second is, feet apart. And we, it goes. Wait the ba ba da bum. And on the first accent, we're going to turn our head to the front. And then we're going to do a toe across. So it's exactly the same as what we just did behind, but over the front of the shin. All right? So, head, toe. It is funky, isn't it? And then we're going to use that foot to spin us around. Then we're going to go, stamp, oh, stamp, tap, tap, tap. Three toes. So stamp it forward. And then just lift that toe up. All right, and that is the beginning of the dance, all right? So let's have a look at that again. So we face the side. We wait. Ba -da 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 Head, toe. Make sure it's really, really on. Right. Tap dancing is all about the rhythm. Then we're going to use that to do a spin. Ba -da 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 Stamp, toe, toe, toe. Stamp is the full foot. Toe is just lifting that front of the foot up. Let's give that a wee schneebel with the music. Amalgamation A. This is again ISTD tap. Can't recommend it highly. Amalgamation A. Tap it and stop time. Ready? <laughs> Bob Marley Reggae, you guys are all about the sophistication. Okay, do you want to give that one more time? Ba -da -da -da. Oh, wait a minute. Let's try and get rid of the guy's voice, but I can't avoid it. like 
kind of lunge. And when all your weight's in front, it's kind of hard to lift that toe up. But we will continue with that next week and see if we can get around quietly without a weird lunge at the end. All right, everybody, super well done. I hope you are enjoying that as much as I am. Let's move on to drama. All right, upper primary actors. So I am back here on the floor um, where I was last Tuesday um, just to recap what we did and to continue with it. So if you remember, we started to do our clowning from Egypt and we had a look at some of the facts and the history of it. And then we decided that we were going to look at facial expressions, first of all, and the element of surprise because... Um, we have to tell stories with our faces this time, unlike the masks. And we can't use our voices like the masks. So if you remember, we had three containers and we thought of some really interesting questions, what you might ask about sort of containers just hanging around. So now um, what I said is we were gonna to start to pretend that there was something in the box and how could we show with our face what our reaction was going to be. So hopefully you have a box with you now, or a container, anything like that, a pan, something that you could lift and something would be underneath it, okay? So, I'm going to move Tim out of the way, and I'm going to focus on the yellow one. So, I asked you what would surprise you if it was inside, remember? And then you were going to name some things that could be inside the box. So, you are going to choose one of the boxes to work with, or you can pretend to have one. And we are going to carefully open the box and peek inside. Now, because mine is an open container, I'm going to have to lift it like this. If you've got like a cardboard, like an Amazon box or something, you will obviously have to lift it like that way. So depending on what you've got, or if you're making it up, you've got the choice. So you can decide how you'd like to open your box. So I'm going to name an item and you're going to pretend it's in your box. Then using your facial expressions, how could you show the audience or give them a bit of a clue as to what might be there. Now, obviously, if you're my audience forward, if I do that, the audience can see there's nothing there. So I'm gonna have to be a bit sneaky with how I do it. So have a think about what box you've got and how you could hide that from the audience so they just see your face, all right? Let's give it a go. So, a chocolate cupcake. So think about your face before opening the box and then how we're going to change it when you find that a delicious, chocolate cookie from sprinkles inside this box ready great how did that feel was that easy let's try another a mouse, an actual live mouse, is going to be under the container. Let's give that a try and see. So have a little think about how you might act. How would it be different from the cupcake? Straight face to begin. And what would happen? Can you tell I'm being a little bit frightened? Creepy, crawly, little tiny, screwy things aren't really my bag. All right, maybe you had a different reaction to a mouse. Maybe you were really friendly and let it go on your hand or something, but don't forget we can't show the audience what's there, so. Great, let's move on. A smelly, dirty sock. Yeesh. All right, ready? So imagine a smelly, dirty sock is under the box. Here we go. have we all got different reactions so far because they're three very very different things aren't they let's give another one a go a real life fairy so imagine lifting that box and there's actually a living being a little tiny fairy with wings perhaps underneath there all right let's give that one a go Oh, 
oh, that's a tricky one, isn't it? And because it can be really, really different. So maybe you'd be frightened. Maybe in real life I would, a reflection. Uh, or perhaps you'd just be so... I was trying to be really enthralled by it. And like, oh my... I can't take my eyes off this thing. This is so magical. So I think people could really react differently. Maybe a bit like the mouse where you drop it because it's got such a fright. Let's see, I think we have one more. Lots of money. Ooh, right, okay. So we're going to give it one more try. Opening the box and there's lots of money in there. Let's try. Nice. All right, guys. I hope you've really thought about warming up the face there. So, oh, I've got something on my eye. It's been there all day. It's driving me nuts. Eh. Right, so that was our attempt at doing that. Now, we are going to have a look at the professional. So I will move the camera in a moment. So, if you can see on the screen, this is a small company called Compagnia Bacala, I believe. And um, they are like a modern day clowning act. So I did tell you there wasn't going to be any curly, weird hair um, and not really much of a face paint, but they use all the traditional um, styles of clowning. Now they have a piece of theatre called Psst, Psst, which is what we're going to have a little clip of um, in the moment. And because we've been thinking about facial expressions and the element of surprise, that's what our focus is going to be. So I've got some questions for you. I'll read them out now so you know what you're looking out for. And then maybe we can reflect on them a little bit after we've watched, okay? So, how would you describe to somebody what has just happened in the clip? So imagine you're sitting alone now, nobody's watching it with you, and then someone asks, oh, what did you do in performing art? How can you explain what we watch? So try and use adjectives and be descriptive about what happens. Can you copy one of the faces the clowns make? There are two. Um, so you can like play around with your face, experiment while you're watching. It's always good to have a mirror nearby so you can see what it looks like. Have a little go and see if you can copy any of the facial expressions. What did the clowns discover in their box? So just like us, they have a box. What is in there? And what were their feelings towards the item in the box? So these are the things that you're going to be having a look at in a moment. I'm going to stand up, move the camera nearer to the TV so you can see, and I'll see you in a moment. All right, folks, as promised, here is that theatre piece, pss, pss, or at least a little bit of it. Think about those questions. <laughs> Again. 
and just a moment to think about them. So how could you describe what's just happened? Could you copy one of their faces? What did the clowns discover in their box? What was their feelings towards the items in the box? So I'll leave you with a little moment to think about that because we are running out of time on drama. I do have an extension task as well for you though. If you would like to get more involved in this after you've watched The Professionals, choose one of the items that we looked at earlier. So the mouse, the smelly stock, the fairy, the money, the cupcake, whatever. And can you show somebody in your family um, your reaction, so pretend to open the box and pretend that to be there, and can they guess what is in the box? And that will give you a really good indication as to how accurate your facial expressions are. So just a little task for you there if you'd like to try that afterwards, but we are out of time for drama. Let's music. All right, everyone, so it is super exciting. It is time for our second lesson on sea shanties. And if you've missed Tuesday's lesson, hopefully your teachers will have told you, and there's posters up around the floors, that uh, we have a sea shanty competition where you need to write your own original ones. We can't copy one that already exists. And then you get somebody to film you singing it and performing it. Uh, you can include brothers, sisters, mums, dads, whoever you want in it. And the winner will win 50 hanks points and will also have their winning video shared on the school's social media. So I'm going to give you some little hints and tips every lesson. I won't take the full length of time so that you guys have some time to think and start to work on it. But if you remember on Tuesday, we started to look at the three types of shanty. And this is something you're going to need to think about today. So we did hear the first one, which was called the long haul shanty. And we thought about that heavy moving. So it had a little bit more of a slower tempo to match that. As a recap, let's just hear it. I'll sing you a song, oh, the fish, oh, the sea. So we imagine we're hey, lifting hey, and hey, passing. And Come on, ye young sailor men, listen to me. And it's got me. that really strong oh, beat. Oh, give us some time to blow the man down. Oh, we can do now, the triplets. Now, the herring, saying I'm king of the sea. Hey, hey, blow the man down. And it has, of course, the call and response. The Lead sailor, everyone else. Oh, give us some time to blow the man down. So it was a really great example of um, all of those things that we looked at. So let's move on today and have a listen to our second type of shanty, which is a short haul shanty. Now that would be something like packing away the sails. So let's have a little listen to how that one sounds. Here's an example. Let's, as we add a little bit more, pretend to pack away the sails. So the sails are like normally, normally white, and they're the big sort of cloth looking things that help catch the wind and help the um, boat to, or the ship, to stay sailing. So they sometimes have to be pulled up pulled down and packed away. So imagine with someone, these humongous sails that need to be folded and put away. Let's have a try of that. Imagine, I mean, obviously I haven't got much space, I'll be off the camera, but imagine like a folding sort of technique while we listen. You don't absolutely have to have it, but it was definitely like a group singing, a jolly kind of tune, and it had a very steady beat that we talked about last time. Now, very quickly, our last one is called a capstan shanty. Um, this is used for raising the sails as an example, a little bit of a quicker 
task. So you would pull ropes and that would get the sails to raise. Um, this is much quicker. This is about someone being drunk. I think back in them days, there was a lot of drinking that went on in these ships. Obviously, we wouldn't know anything about that. But listen to the beat and imagine you are pulling the sails, so pulling these ropes. What will we do with the drunken sailor? What will we do with the drunken sailor? What will we do with the drunken sailor? Lie in the morning. Hey, hey, the sun rises. Hey, hey, the sun rises. Hey, hey, the sun rises. much quicker tempo isn't it so there are the three types of uh, shanties now your challenge for today and I will leave you to get on with it for some helpful hints and tips start to think about an everyday task or chore that you must do so this is why I see shanties exist it's to pass the time while the sailors have to do all their heavy work so you need to think of what you're going to sing your sea shanty about. So think about an everyday task, marching into school, brushing your teeth, packing your bag, doing your homework, eating your lunch, I don't know, something that you do every day. Have a really good think about that this lesson. Um, act out doing the chore, so try and pretend you're doing it as realistically as possible to get the speed right, because that steady beat is super important. That will then tell you what type of shanty you might need to write. All right, so Mrs. Bates, helpful hints and tips for this week. Choose an everyday task that you're going to sing about, pretend to act it out, and find that rhythm, find the beat. And then you can work out if you've got a long haul, a short haul, or a capstan shanty. All right, you've got five minutes left of this lesson, and of course you can spend some time as homework if you'd like to do that as well. Have a think about that now, guys. Thanks so much for joining. I'll see you next week, and I'll give you some more helpful hints and tips.